Hi everybody, welcome to the channel. I do hope everybody is keeping well. Very special day today. The sun is shining, amazing scenery, and the local Ducati dealership here in Jersey have kindly said to me, courtesy of Jeff, the owner, yep, Paul, you can take this Ducati Diavel V4 demonstrator out for a couple of hours, so we've got a glorious day for it. I've not ridden one of these Ducati things before, so first time for me, so we've got a bike, full tank of fuel, we have a key, so without further ado, let's jump on it and I shall tell you what I think of the 2023 Ducati Diavel V4. But folks, it looks absolutely beautiful. So let's get on the bike, fire it up, and go for a bit of a ride. And I'll tell you what I think. So I've ridden it for about an hour already, so just getting used to it. I'm not a Ducati man myself. As you know, I've got my KTM 890R and a good old man's BMW GS. On the bike now, keyless ride. So make sure that's clear. And then we just actually, it's got an unlock button to unlock all the electronics and stuff to fire it up. So there we go. The screen should come into life as it does. Diavel V4, look at that. Very nice TFT screen. And let's pop it into neutral. I've got it in touring mode at the moment. And let's just start it up. And let's go for a bit of a spin. So the Ducati Diavel V4. So I don't really know much about it, so I jumped on the internet the last 48 hours and just had a look at the all the bits and pieces for the Ducati Diavel. And yeah, this is the third generation of Diavel. Oh, lots of people out today. So this was launched back in October 2022, and I think it actually hit the showrooms in February 2000 and 23 make sure there's no cars coming thank you very kindly so price of this i'm going to put the price up here it's a little bit eye-wateringly <laughs> so it's the kind of bike that maybe if i sold my house and got rid of the wife but it's just a glorious machine so i've been on it for about an hour now and it's just for a big bike a long bike it handles really well and this rev counter here, it's actually a, a giggle meter, that's how I'm going to call it. So below 4,000 revs, yep, you're sort of smiling a little bit. And then above 4,000 revs, the giggles get a little bit louder. And then above 5,000 revs, it starts singing, coming on song. And you're just absolutely laughing your proverbials off. Um, and things happen very quickly. So Diavel, if you're not Italian, it's, I think it stands for devil. So I'm on the red devil for want of a better word. So from a price point of view, there's only one flavor of bike out at the moment, and that's the V4. There's no V4S out and about currently. So you just get the bog standard V4, but it's got a lot of stuff on it. And you get that in two flavors. You can get it in the red or the black and that's it so I'm not sure whether there's going to be a v4s coming out but at the moment it seems that all you folks have just got the standard v4 so let's just talk about this diavel then so i really don't know too much about the diavel so i jumped on the internet the last couple of days did a little bit of research so this is the third generation of the ducati diavel and back in 2022 when they launched this uh, before that it was a v-twin and obviously they've spooned the v4 engine into it from the uh, panigale and the v4 street fighter so although it says v4 the street fighter engine and the panigale engine well they're not they're not exactly the same that's fitted to this bike so this engine it's derived from those bikes but it's actually derived pretty much directly from the their um their multistrada so what's the difference between the uh, this engine, this V4, and the Street Fighter? So back in the day, the Ducati came out with their V4 engine, and that powered the Panigale and the Street Fighter. So those engines, high revving, mucho power, about 200 plus horsepower or something like that. And they were the Desmodronic, if I pronounce that correctly, engine. And if you're not too au fait with what that means, basically it means that the the valves, when they open, they're actually opened and closed by separate cams. Obviously, that means the engines can run a little bit higher on the rev range and give you a bit more power, or a lot more power, actually. 
because uh, back in the day when they when the valves opened on the cam uh, the they used springs to then close the valves but back in the day the, me the metallurgy wasn't that good and the springs weren't strong enough to close the valves uh, when they needed to close them so Ducati they weren't the first to do it but they decided to use the uh, another cam to actually close the valve as well so they had a cam to open the valve and a, ca a cam to close the valve these bikes the Multistrada and the Diavel well they don't actually need all that 208 horsepower so those engines are in a different state of tune and basically it means that they don't need the cam to open and a separate cam to close the valves so they've got a cam to open the valve and then they've just gone back to using a spring to shut the valve so obviously there's servicing implications and cost implications there which hopefully make things a little bit cheaper and it means the service intervals aren't as close say if you're on the Panigale or the Street Fighter with the Desmodronic uh, twin cam should we call it so hopefully things should be a little bit cheaper although they're V4s in this one the Multistrada the V4s they're not the same as the V4 engines in the Panigale and the Street Fighter so <laughs> if I've got that wrong folks please make a comment in the comment section down below so they're, they're basically the, the differences between the Diavel and the Multistrada and then the the, the twin cams for shutting the valves Panigale and Street Fighter so I think that's that's let's put that bit to bed and let's just talk about the Ducati Diavel V4 obviously it's pretty much similar to the uh, Multistrada but they've just I guess retuned it a little bit and I'll put all the stats up here so this is the Multistrada engine statistics compared to the Diavel statistics produces 168 horsepower and then if we compare that to let's say the Street Fighter together with the what, what they rev to you'll see that the I think the Street Fighter revs to maybe 13,000 revs and the maximum power uh, with the revs on this is 10,750 so V4 engines but in different states of tunes and they operate their valves differently so I've been riding this bike now for an hour or so and yeah the engine is is quite impressive so the main thing with the engine then the V4 engine is basically they've taken a lot of stuff from uh, MotoGP technology and you've got the V4 so two engines facing forward two two engines two cylinders facing forward two facing rearwards and then if you're not in first gear and then you're below 4,000 revs then the rear two cylinders the rear banker cylinders don't work basically the fuel injection system stops fuel going to them so that's got a couple of things it does for for it it saves on uh, fuel and then it hopefully will make the engine run a little bit cooler if you're in slower moving traffic kind of thing so that's um that's got one little trick up its sleeve again beautiful day for taking the bike out a little bit of fog over the bay there but still very nice so that's one little trick that it's got up his sleeve that it's borrowed from MotoGP and then the other trick that it's got is obviously this is quite a longish kind of wheelbase bike and then the crank shaft actually rotates uh, one way or opposite to the way that the wheels are going so counter rotating crankshaft and that just makes the bike you know flick from side to side so you don't not going against the gyroscopic force of the rotating wheels or something like that so they're the two i'm going to say that they're, they're the two biggies uh, in the engine hello sir <laughs> so so you've got the counter rotating crank to aid stability or turnability should we call it and then you've got the rear bank of cylinders just having the fuel cut off to them as long as you're not in first gear and you're below 4000 revs but if you're below 4,000 revs in second gear upwards then if you want to get a bit of a wiggle on then if you accelerate whatever whatever the threshold is then it will actually kick kick in those that rear bank of cylinders even though you're below 4,000 revs because the system knows uh, you want you want to go a bit quicker sir there we go maybe for overtaking or something like that so that is the engine 
uh, the V4 engine, very nice. Below 4,000 revs, you can't really tell that it's firing on two cylinders, the forward cylinders, at all really. I can't sort of spot it. But I will say, below 4,000 revs, uh, obviously this bike's only on about 170 miles, so everything's a little bit tight. But when you open it up, you know, you get vibration through the seat the and the foot pegs as it sort of wants to unleash the power so it's not not rough is not the right word but you can feel it sort of things vibrating beneath you then you get to four and a half and obviously the all the cylinders are working now and then four and a half things start to get creamy smooth and then by five thousand revs boy the thing just wants to go and there is no vibration through the handlebars through the grips whatsoever so done a really good job in uh, isolating any uh, vibration but maybe that's the v4 engine i don't know but yeah nothing nothing through the handlebars at all and you can feel a little bit through the foot pegs you know up to you know 4,000 revs but i have to say as i normally say it's a damn good machine and for a big bike again i'm going to put some of the specs up here this is the weight it's over 200 kilos um, but it it, it's very, very flickable. It really is. You, you don't know you're on a, a big bike, a cruiser. Yeah, so they, this is a, a muscle cruiser with that 168 horsepower. But, you know, you could ride this 30, 40 miles an hour all day, not a problem. The engine might not like it, you know. I think it just wants to fly. Above 4,000, I think that's the sweet spot. Above 4,000, it wants to be out, really. Yeah, and the bike fits me very nice. Um, I've got my Falco boots on. I don't know if you can see that down there. Um, the legs aren't quite 90 degrees, just slightly lower than 90 degrees. Feet are slightly forward, but very comfortable. Uh, the bars are, I think that's more, more back and raised towards you from the outgoing model. Um, but yeah, not much of an arm bend in the elbow, but very comfortable nonetheless. So yeah, it's a comfortable place to be and you've got everything you want on there on the 5-inch TFT and you've got all the main information. The top left, you've got the fuel, top right, you've got the time, you've got the engine temperature, bottom right and the air temperature, bottom left and then you've got all the other bump uh, in the middle there. Mirrors, yep, fine. And as I said, below 4,000 revs, when you just open the throttle, the bike just sort of, I'm not, it doesn't shake, but it, you feel it, it just wants to go, wants to be unleashed. Uh, but I'm not going to do that today because I might get into trouble. But it's a very comfortable bike. Um, the seat itself is firm and supportive. Let's just park up somewhere and I'll take you through the bike. But in the meantime, I'm going to have a little bit of fun on this V4 uh, Diavel. Woohoo! Oh, wow! Okay, folks, so I'm obviously having lots of fun on the bike, so I've got my specification sheet. So let's quickly talk about the bike, go from the front to the back. So we have the Diablo Rossi three tyres and I've been on the bike now for a couple of hours and yeah really nice tyre actually no issues with those we've got the Brembo Starlima monobox lots of braking power there and working our way upwards then so the forks then fully adjustable and we've got compression and rebound at the top here and the lights all the lights on the bike are LED and I particularly like the way that the indicators come on very stylish and they are all self cancelling as well you got DRLs as well but I'm not a great lover of DRLs but legislation in some countries means you have to have them we've got hydraulic clutch and brake and everything's just nicely finished and the clutch and the brake lever are adjustable good job because I've got diddy hands as well mirrors yeah absolutely no problem with the mirrors uh, you can see what's behind you no issues whatsoever and then the actual all the instrument uh, layout the, the switches and everything they're backlit with a nice red glow and everything just falls to hand very nicely. A uh, five inch TFT, which is very easy to see. And the only thing I would have liked was maybe for the TFT to be able to be angled a little bit. I just find it a little bit too vertical, but that'd be my only sort of negative there, but very easy to read as well. And then you've got the riding modes. So you've got sport, touring, urban, and then wet as well. So I've just had it in touring mode, but when we get back on the bike, I might just try it in sport modes, but I'm not a Ducati rider. I've not had one before, so uh, I guess you can configure some of those if you dive deeper into the system. We've got the radiator here, and there's no uh, radiator cover on the top here, so you might want to invest in something like that. 
Um, but yeah, beautifully finished. The air intakes here, all very nice. Just, I think that as a design thing, it's, it's just very nicely put together. And then obviously you've got the V4 engine and the Gran Turismo engine. It's 1158cc. Ch ch chucks out about 168 horsepower and that's at 10,750 revs and 93 foot-pounds of torque which is 126 newton meters and that all kicks in at 7,500 rpm. The good thing as we've already mentioned about the non-desmotronic top end for want of a better word then the valve check clearance is now at 37,000 miles so that's going to uh, have a bit of an impact on your wallet no doubt the whole frame is different that's a completely different bike to the previous gen 2 model and um, we have a monocoque aluminium frame and then obviously the v4 engine slotted in there as well so the fuel tank that's 20 liters in there and i'll put how many miles per gallon you can do and how many miles the tank will do until you have to get off and push it or call somebody and it's just put your key in there and unlock it so it's a good old-fashioned key to unlock the fuel filler cap. Uh, I'm five foot nine. Uh, I put my inside seam measurement or whatever you call it in here. And yeah, I can flat foot that no problem. Got me old Falco boots on, absolutely no problem at all. And easy to maneuver the bike. But the only thing is a lot of these cruisers, uh, I guess, you know, you just catch your inside of your calf muscle on there. So just be a little bit careful when you're maneuvering the bike. Otherwise, whoosh, it's going to fall over if it knocks you off balance but yeah they just get in the way a little bit seat is nice and comfortable lovely detail on the diavel v4 this rear section can come off and go and store that somewhere and then obviously uh, we've got the very nice pillion foot pegs uh, down here as well so yeah really really good one thing i didn't mention uh, to the left on the tft here you've got a usb plug as well so just pull the rubber waterproof cap off and then put your phone charger in there whatever you whatever you want to do put in there and then the exhaust system as well i don't know whether i like the exhaust system <laughs> it's a shame they can't put the uh that spitfire aftermarket accessory exhaust on it but that's going to set you back about five and a half grand or something um yeah and i think acropovic do one as well for a similar price it's a shame that they couldn't do that on here for a, a cheaper price but yeah I, i'm not overly keen on the the missile launchers rocket launchers I think it just detracts from the, the swinging arm. And the other thing I'm not overly keen on is the yellow spring, because I think you look at it and your eye gets taken to the spring rather than the, the whole bike. Maybe they should have just done that black, but who knows? That's just my, my little humble opinion. Um, the rear wheel, very nice black with the sort of silver finish, very pleasant. And the massive back tire then, that's 240 uh, millimeters wide, massive. But when you're riding the bike, it feels really, really fine, very flickable, and obviously the rear shock as well, and that is adjustable. Um, there's rear grab rail on here, but I don't know how to get that out. I've got a cough to that one. I don't know how to get that out. I tried, but I couldn't. And then you've got the rear LED light cluster on here. I just wouldn't want to clean it. If you live anywhere where it's going to rain, it's going to get dirty, that's going to be an issue. But yeah, it looks very, very nice. Uh, a thing of beauty, as they say, very very easy on the eye. So certainly from behind, it looks very nice. I don't know why they can put the indicators up here as well, built it all in. Maybe there's some legislation or something like that. I don't really know. Uh, and then you've got the rear hugger, number plate, number plate light, and then the indicators as well. And again, these are all LED and they give you that sort of wave kind of pattern for want of a better word. So very nice. Chain driven, clearly. It's got a you know, massive electronic suite on it to keep you uh, in check for want of a better word. Uh, yeah, it's just really, really nice. Let's talk about the weight of the bike, and actually, you can't really feel it. The weight of the bike, then, without any fuel in it, it says here, let me find this 223 kilos, and that is without fuel. And that's a weight saving from the outgoing model of about 13 kilos. Obviously, it hasn't got the trellis frame on it, so we've got the uh, monocoque frame and the new engine. So, overall, though, you're 13 kilos lighter than the other one, the outgoing model, but yeah. Um, it's absolutely no, it feels really light uh, when you're sat on it, easy to move around. I think, folks, that's really about it. There's not much more for me to say. Um, yeah, they do lots of accessories for it. Hello, wifey. <laughs> um, panniers on the back there, a backrest. We've got a pillion, pillion on the back there. So they do lots of stuff and it's very easy to put the price up. So I've got to say Ducati, very nice. My wife's not very keen on it. 
all things said and done, it is a, th I, yeah, it's a thing of beauty. And I'd like one in my garage, actually. Uh, the seat height then, just get that in there. So the seat height is 790 mil, but yeah, real nice machine. So let's go through some twisties and then take it back to bikers. And then I'll give you my final thoughts as I drop the bike back off. Anyway, I'll have to go and rob a bank or something. <laughs> or something like that. Or <laughs> we'll go into some criminal activity. Anyway, let's get back on the road. I might have got a bit confused about how we sort of fire the bike up when I collected it earlier on. So keyless ride, I said about this unlock button here, but I think basically all you do, don't laugh you Ducati owners, yeah. So you turn it on down here and also turn it off down there as well. So sorry folks, I got that wrong. So we turn the power on down here. This must be some kind of lock function on here. Let's just have a listen to see what it sounds like. So just pop it into neutral, start the bike up. The only thing I'd love to be able to do is show you how fast this thing goes, but I don't actually want to get into trouble. But it's got lots of go to it, above four and a bit thousand revs. The engine just sort of comes onto song and it gets nice and creamy and silky, just very nice and obviously below 4,000 revs. The thing that surprised me actually was the amount of actual wind protection from the front. For a bike that's a naked bike, or a cruise a naked bike kind of thing, it's surprisingly good at sort of kicking the air up and sort of putting it over you. You certainly know that you're in the face of the wind but this the way they've designed it here is um yeah it obviously it obviously works well and i tend to think they've put that in the wind tunnel because it it certainly helps deflect it over which is really really good sadly they haven't included heater grips for the british market um, which is really uh, unfortunate because i'd have liked to see those on there but they're uh, an optional accessory and i'll put the price up here but yeah i think bikes in europe really should all have heater grips on them because I think this would be a fair weather bike um, if it was my bike it would be a fair weather bike and it'd come out on a nice day like today and in the winter it'd be nice to have heater grips on it so I think we've pretty much covered everything that engine is quite impressive you know once you get it going it sings really nicely um, yeah it's just really good I'm I'm not fortunate enough to have the 23,000 pounds plus that is the recommended retail price for this bike in the UK, which is such a shame, because for a, for a big bike, I think you would give an average sports rider. <laughs> it's all right, mate, I'm not gonna take you out. Cheers, dude. You'd give an average sports rider on a sporty bike, maybe the, the Street Fighter, I think you give them a run for their money because this handles, it shouldn't handle as well as what it does, especially for the kind of bike it is, but you could have a lot of fun on this. Put the luggage on the back, go touring, that kind of stuff. Really good fun. Again, you could go and spend lots of money on the Ducati accessory package. I mean, you just, well, sky's the limit really. But if you've got that 23,000 pounds plus, man, it just goes. Yeah, it just goes. It just wants to go. Anyway, that's my take on the Dia Ducati Diavel V4. I really like it. It goes well. It stops well. It turns well. A lot better than what it should do, but they've clearly... Oh, it's just such a good bike. They spent a lot of time and effort on this machine, and they've got a cracking bike. I mean, it just turns in so well. It's nuts. What a cracking bike. If only I had more money. Quick shifter, it's a new bike, a little bit clunky, sort of uh, on the way up, but I am below sort of four or 5,000 revs, but I guess above that it's gonna be buttery smooth. The engine's lovely, above four and a bit thousand revs when everything's singing and dancing. Yeah, good bike, and I like the LED lights. I like the look of it, it's comfortable. Even with no screen, they've done a great job on here. Harley Davidson? Got no idea. <laughs> Hopefully nobody's injured or seriously hurt. One thing I didn't say, it's actually quite a narrow 
a narrow bike so my legs aren't splayed out at all very comfortable yeah nice and slim through here i guess that's the v4 engine really yeah really nice very comfortable bike i guess the other good thing about this bike is you can do a bit of posing on it as well can't you something i didn't mention earlier on but yeah do a bit of posing on it it's yeah just a good bike i like it a lot i like it a lot oh, dear me even in the traffic i'm in sport mode at the moment you know just further in the clutch and that big engine it's all right it's not lurchy it's good it's nice yeah just feel the heat from the engine now but we are in rush hour traffic stop start stop start but the clutch is very nice brakes are nice and progressive nice feel to them it's all good so let's go from sport into wet mode let's just try the wet mode so wet mode enter wet mode so wet mode then let's just see what that's like on my final few minutes on the 2023 Ducati Diavel obviously the suspension on this is not electronic it's a manual job yeah it's a lot softer on the throttle a lot softer which is what you want if you're in wet conditions isn't it and let's just put it back to touring hold the button on the right and there we go back in touring mode so that's it we're finally back at the Ducati dealership which is bikers uh, so big thanks folks for letting me demo this bike hopefully the video is half decent but uh, big big thanks guys really enjoyed it what a cracking machine just sad I'm sad that I haven't got 23 grand to buy one what a great bike great bike lovely bike if you're on the island pop down to bikers go and see Jeff or Owen Owen's away on holiday at the moment he's the main salesman there but yeah they do Ducati Harley Davidson KTM yeah pop down have a cup of coffee uh, see if they've got any demo and demonstration bikes in take them out for a run but uh, thanks guys and that has been the 2023 Ducati Diavel and turn it off nice job done cut off for now